Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'd like to share with you a video of how I ensure that the entire lens is within the capsular bag. There was a discussion on the ASCRS listserv about uh, lenses that had a haptic that was outside of the bag. And so um, even though this may seem to be a relatively small problem, uh, I just wanted to share my technique on how I ensure the lens is completely within the bag. And although there is no 100% fail-safe technique, I think that these steps uh, are quite helpful and hopefully uh, will prevent other people from having a problem. So the lens needs to be, uh, the leading edge of the intraocular lens needs to be placed within the capsular bag as shown here. And then as the INA is placed, you wanna make sure the haptics are loose and detached from the lens optic. And then you wanna go underneath the lens and push on the left side of the lens underneath it. And as you do that, it rotates the lens 90 degrees. And you can see the haptics are now 90 degrees from the main incision. And when you, perform, when you do that, you make sure that the lens is completely uh, within the capsular bag. And then you want to, as you remove the INA tip, you uh, perform a, a fluid exchange by pushing BSS with a cannula into the lens so the chamber does not collapse, where you could inadvertently cause a haptic to prolapse out of the bag. And so again, that was a lot of steps. Um, and so I wanna review this again, one by one, make sure the leading edge of the optic is placed within the capsular bag. And then with the INA, you're going to make sure that each haptic is released. Once each haptic is released, you're gonna go through uh, underneath uh, the optic here, underneath the optic and then push on the left side and it causes the lens to rotate 90 degrees. And so that means the haptics are actually in the, in the bag and pushed into the bag because the INA tip has pushed the optic successfully uh, all the way um, uh, contralaterally, and this causes the haptics to be pushed into the capsular fornix. And when you do this successfully and correctly, uh, the lens should dial in without any um, hangups or snags. If it does, that might mean that the lens is not completely in the bag. And again, I like to perform this fluid exchange with the BSS cannula to prevent the chamber from collapsing. So again, the lens needs to be within the bag, the leading edge, you want to release the uh, haptic from the optic with the INA tip, go underneath the optic and dial it, pushing from the left side, which rotates the lens clockwise 90 degrees. This ensures that the haptics are socked into the capsular fornix, the optic is in the capsular fornix, and you're able to remove the viscoelastic underneath the lens. Part of the problem is, is when you try to uh, remove the uh, viscoelastic without going underneath the lens. The, the OVD may cause the lens to prolapse out of the bag. And so I think it's very important for every surgeon to go underneath the lens to get that OVD from underneath. So again, same technique, you're going underneath the bag, removing all the viscoelastic, any lens epithelial cells uh, from underneath the bag. Again, because the optic is pushed up into the capsular fornix, uh, and you can see it's not being pushed from side to side, that tells you that each of the haptics are also uh, within the bag. And again, I'm performing this um, fluid exchange, which prevents the, caps the, uh, the anterior chamber from collapsing, and then uh, you hydrate your incisions. So the dialing of the lens is very important, and as you can see, the dialing is very smooth. When you dial that optic, when you get underneath the lens and you're pushing on the left side of the optic, the lens dials in very nicely, and that ensures that the haptics are indeed within the bag because if it wasn't, it would get hung up. So again, you're getting under the optic, pushing on the left side, and that causes that lens to rotate 90 degrees very easily. You're removing all the viscoelastic from underneath the bag. And again, you're not causing any zonular traction because you're actually tilting the optic as you do that. Again, no zonular traction when you do that because you're tilting the optic and getting underneath to get all that viscoelastic out. And again, because you're pushing the optic into the capsular fornix, you're ensuring that the haptics are also within the capsular bag. And so each of these cases coming up are gonna be smaller uh, pupils, but because the technique is the same and it's consistent, again, you're confident that the, the, the entire lens is, it, is it within the bag. So again, you uh, rotate um, the optic 90 degrees, you tilt it up to get the viscoelastic out. You're very confident that the haptics are, again, within the capsular bag because of this maneuver. 
and uh, you want to make sure that the, the uh, that the chamber does not collapse, so you perform the fluid exchange, and then you hydrate your incisions. So each case coming up here pretty much duplicates the steps that I discussed, but because the pupil is smaller, we'll make one additional step. So again, you're making sure that the lens is within the capsular bag and the leading edge. You push on the haptics to make sure that they're released from the optic. You get underneath the optic here and push to the left side and it causes the lens to rotate clockwise about 90 degrees. You're tilting the optic and getting underneath the, the between the, the capsule and the bag to make sure that there's no uh, visco, the capsule and the lens, excuse me, and you're removing the viscoelastic. And because you can't see the edge of the optic excuse me, you don't see the edge of the capsule rexus here, I'm gonna use a second instrument to essentially go and retract the, uh, the pupil so that you wanna make sure that the lens is completely within the bag. And so I'm able to uh, confidently make sure that the complete lens is in the bag, uh, but also just for reassurance, you can use a second instrument to retract the pupil uh, just to give yourself some reassurance that the entire lens is in the back. So this is the final case. The lens is going in. The leading edge is within the capsular bag. You're using the INA tip to tease off the haptics from the optic, and then you get underneath the uh, optic edge, and as you tilt it up, you will uh, push on the optic so that it dials clockwise 90 degrees. And you see how smoothly that happens, and you see it's being tilted the entire time when I push it. And that tells you that uh, you're underneath the, the lens and you're also pushing that optic so that it's pushing the haptics further within the capsular bag. And so that just gives you reassurances. And in this case, because of the small pupil, I'm using a second instrument to retract the iris to make sure that I can uh, see that the entire lens, including the haptics, are within the capsular bag. You perform that fluid exchange by when you withdraw the INA tip, you're continuing to push BSS and a cannula, and then quickly hydrate your incisions to make sure that the, the chamber does not doesn't collapse too, too much. So in summary, you want to ensure the leading edge of the IOL is injected into the capsular bag. You release the haptics using the INA tip, and then lift the edge of the optic and push it underneath it on the left side to rotate it 90 degrees cl clockwise. Again, you're tilting the optic in order to do this, so there's no zonal retraction. Dialing the optic in this manner helps to push and lock the haptics and the optic into the capsule or fornix. You remove the OVD from under the IOL, which ensures the haptics do not pop out of the bag. And then you prevent the anterior chamber from collapsing by irrigating BSS when withdrawing the INA tip. And when in doubt, use a second instrument to retract the pupil. I hope this was helpful to you, and thank you for your attention.